Good evening. Welcome to this edition of Northeast Diary. Here we bring you the latest developments from India's unexplored Northeast region. Friends, everyone has been affected in some way or the other by the second wave of COVID-19. Farmers too have had to face a lot of hardships during this time. In this edition, we will go over to Meghalaya and Manipur and learn how farmers are faring during this difficult phase. We will also take you to the oldest monastery in Sikkim. For quite some time now, the Department of Women Development Nagaland with the Transformative Livelihood Intervention Project has been marketing food and food products under the brand name Mikey. Going back to a few years, the Nagaland government realizing that more emphasis is needed for upliftment of women and to facilitate the active involvement in mainstream developmental activities of the state, created the Department of Women Development during the year 2003-2004. Besides providing support services and safeguarding the legal rights, one of the primary focuses of the department is to address the issue of empowerment of women in Nagaland through the socio-economic upliftment. Here's more from a Kohima correspondent. Mikey is a transformative livelihood intervention project initiated and facilitated by the Women Resource Development Department, Government of Nagaland, started in the year 2006, which aims at enabling women in the state to achieve upward social and economic mobility as well as power and status. Based in Kohima, Mikey has managed to spread its popularity not only in the state but also outside like Shillong and Guwahati. They are dried wild apple, gooseberry, soyabean chutney, pop rice, dried bamboo shoot, English gourd, roselle, dry keen chili, dry pineapple, etc. are among their processed food items. All their products are produced by various entrepreneurs and self-help groups who are associated with the Women Resource Development. To celebrate the contributions of women as equal partners in socio-economic development of the state, be it as cultivators, farmers, artisans, entrepreneurs, professionals, homemakers, etc. The Mikey Fest, which was launched in October 2018-19, to 19, is now an extension of the Hornbill Festival. Besides, the Mikey has been producing face masks since the COVID-19 pandemic started and making it to public at reasonable price. For Northeast Dairy, this is Asunyo from Kohima. <laughs> In Mizoram, apart from the phenomenal and usual charitable activities in these trying times, some villagers have dared to set up their own COVID care centers so that needy villagers can get the benefits of health care in their own village affected by coronavirus. Here is a report from a correspondent from Aizol. Tip is a small village situated in the southern district of Sertip. The worldwide pandemic COVID-19 has also swooped on the people of this remote village. With this, the villagers have set an example in the fight against coronavirus. With positive cases of the infection beginning to surface, the villagers have embarked on a challenge in setting up a community COVID care center so that the COVID-19 patients of their village can be treated in their home place. It is noted that the state government has also encouraged communities to set up community COVID care centers. Already many churches and community centers have spared accommodation for COVID care centers. In this line, the villages led by the village level task force took up the initiative last month. Sooner the church, the NGOs have come forward to strengthen facilities of the 4C. Obviously, the medical team from the primary health care center have taken up responsibilities of providing medical treatment. Talking to AIR News, VLTS Secretary Lelram Thara of Tsingti Village has shared the experience of setting up the community COVID care center. He said, We feel very proud today after setting up our own community COVID care center in our own village. The idea came up among the members of our village task force since cases started being detected in the village. And then the patients were bound to travel to the district headquarters for treatment, and we have seen this has an enormous toll on their emotional well-being. The villagers bid farewell to their loved ones with tears, and such tragic stories happened many times in the past few months. These happenings prompted the villagers to set up our own center for treatment of covid now we are happy that it has now been materialized and is being run smoothly 
because of the selfless service of the medical team who are basically attached to the village PHC. Now 14 patients including children are undergoing treatment in this community COVID care center. Medical team for Qingqi Primary Health Center are giving treatment to this patient. To run this center and to take care of the patients, the VLTF have been receiving contribution from most of the families of village, also from the church and from NGOs. Food and medicines are being procured from these contributions. Also, local MLA Mr. Lalrinoma donated 1 lakh rupees to improve the facilities of the center. Also, the VLTF secretary Laram Thara said that anyone from the nearby villages in need of COVID treatment is welcome in the center. For Northeast Diary, this is Irene Aizol. Farmers are a crucial part of the food value chain. However, the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic and the ongoing lockdown has made income generation difficult for farmers as there is no place to sell the produce. Despite a good harvest, farmers are unable to sell the harvested produce in the market. Sometimes, farmers are forced to sell the stocks to middlemen for a low price or let them go to waste. Not only this, the pandemic has hit many vegetable sellers and vendors in the town. A Shillong correspondent tells us more. The state government has reactivated 1917 I-teams. The 1917 I-team stands for Integrated Technology Enabled Agri-Management System. It's a project of the Department of Agriculture, Government of Meghalaya, with the motto of connecting farmers to markets. The 1917 I-team strives to reach out to the communities with the essential supply of food items and also ensure that farmers' produce does not go waste in this time of crisis. Gavin C. Sulai, Program Manager of 1917 I-team, shared how it works. 1917 iTeams was launched in the year 2018. It is actually a project funded by the Department of Agriculture. We have been in existence since then and providing service to the farmers in three domains. iTeams provide logistic service. So we have a fleet of 18 vehicles which are on the field, on the ground right now throughout the states uh, from Garo Hills, Khasi Hills and even Jaintia Hills. During this current lockdown also, we have facilitated many farmers who have called our short code 1917 and we have linked them to all the buyers. We have big buyers who generally supply outside the state. We have a second category of buyers who supply in within the state. 1917 iTeams do not purchase anything. So what happened, the buyer network is a totally private driven enterprise. Okay, they will purchase as long as the demand is there. So what we need to do is we need to basically block the loopholes for the supply. And that is what we have been constantly working, that the vegetables reach to all the nooks and corners of the of Shillong Town, of Jowai, of Tura, everywhere. So once the supply is corrected and there is no breakage in the supply, then it totally depends on the consumption pattern. It totally depends on the market demand. If the de market demand is there, our buyers are already there and they are already in action. So which means as the demand increase, our purchase will also increase. But from our side, I want to stress on that, that we do not purchase anything. We provide all the information that there is a demand for this produce here, there is a demand for that produce there. Then our buyers, they pick up that and thus the supply. The 1917 I teams has been working in tandem with the deputy commissioners of the state to ensure that vegetables and fruits are made available to the public during the ongoing lockdown and farmers also get to sell their produce. This is Rusnam for Northeast Diary from AIR News, Shillong. In Manipur, the Manipur Organic Mission Agency, under the initiative of the State Chief Minister, initiated a program which helps farmers in distress and also the common people. Let's hear more from an Imphal correspondent, J.J. Thokchum. The State Chief Minister, N. Viren Singh, who immediately launched market intervention scheme through Manipur Organic Mission Agency, MoMA. From last 25 days, the agency has been procuring fresh vegetables and fruit from farmers across the state and these items 
are made available to the common people through home delivery. MoMA, in collaboration with its affiliated farmers, producer companies and other NGOs, visited the nook and corner of the state and purchased the crops and sells this item through mobile app. Speaking to AIR News, Project Director of MoMA, K. Dev Dutta Sarma, said that the agency has so far procured 800 metric tons of crops from the farmers and providing this item to more than 300 households every day, he said. Since the second wave has hit again, immediately Honorable Chief Minister has initiated the program on market intervention scheme, which mainly aim at relieving the farmers who are in distress situation because of the COVID pandemic or any natural disaster. On the other hand, particularly in the thickly populated area of Imphal city, here the persons who are all depending on the everyday market for vegetables, for fruit, for any food item has abruptly come to a halt because of total closing of this market complex. So taking these two things as most important, Manipur Organic Mission Agency has mobilized the farmers producer companies under Manipur Organic Mission Agency. Altogether, till now, approximately 800 metric tons of fruits and vegetables have been successfully procured from farmers' fields. And the services of home delivery has been doing with 200 to 300 customers per day at Imphal only. Some of the FPCs have initiated by themselves with our support to do the same way the home delivery system. So they have been carrying out and up to some extent in the city areas of this district they could address the issues of not getting the fresh vegetables and fruits by the customers. So till now Altogether, for, for the last about 20 plus days, every day we have been able to deliver 300 plus customers. The agency had also conducted the market intervention scheme in the last year when the COVID-19 hit the state for such initiative which took role as severe for farmers as well as common people. During the hard time, people appreciated Manipuchi Minister and MoMA. JJ Thoksom from Imphal for Note is Diary. The demand for tea produced in Arunachal Pradesh in the international market is growing and Tea Board India through various workshops and training programs is trying to involve more and more local people in this cash crop business thus making them self-sustainable and also fulfilling the growing demand. A report. The Himalayan state of Arunachal Pradesh is known as the land of potential. The foothill regions of the state are ideal for growing tea. Basically, the tea producing area are on the hill slopes of Siang Basin and plain lands along Assam or National Boundary. Arup Jati Das, Assistant Director, Tea Board India, Itanagar Regional Office, informed that Arunachal Pradesh produces about 12 to 14 million kg tea every year and efforts are underway to increase its production. He said variety of specialty tea are grown and produced in the state, which have attained good demand in the global market. आप ऐसे उन उसमें प्रदेश में तो लोअर एरिया से आपका जो बॉर्डरिंग एरिया आसाम का बॉर्डर एरिया से है उससे आपका हिल स्लोप एरिया में भी वो नसल का टी अभी ग्रो हो रहा है तो मेनली हम लोग नॉर्दर्न पार्ट ऑफ और नसल एंड साउदर्न पार्ट ऑफ और नसल दो पार्ट में ये कर सकते हैं अभी नॉर्दर्न पार्ट में आपका हो गया आपका सियांग पपुम परे सियांग डिस्ट्रिक्ट अपर सियांग डिस्ट्रिक्ट लोअर सुबनसरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट आपका वेस्ट सियांग डिस्ट्रिक्ट और आपका साउदर्न पार्ट में आपका सांगलांग टीराप आपका लोअर डिबंग वैली लमसाय लुहित ये सब एरिया में अभी टी ग्रो हो रहा है तो ये उन्नसल का टी तो बहुत नाम कर रहा है अभी तो लास्ट ईयर और उससे पहले साल के भी आपका वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड भी बना हुआ है ये दोनों पुलो टी स्टेट वहां से तो आपका वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड क्या है तो अप टू वन लाख के जी वन लाख रुपीज पर के जी रेट मिला है ऑक्शन में उन्नसल स्पेशलिटी टी तो बहुत बन रहा है आपका व्हाइट टी भी बनता है पर्पुल टी व्हाइट टी उलूंग टी येलो टी ग्रीन टी ऑर्थोडॉक्स टी Mr. Das informed that the golden needle tea produced by the Doni Polo Tea Factory of Arunachal Pradesh has been sold at a whopping price of Rs 75,000 per kg in the auction market, while its price has reached to Rs 1 lakh per kg in the private market. He also informed that Tea Board India is taking up schemes to help the small tea growers in the state to boost cultivation skill and set up mini factories. For Norris Diary, this is Rakesh Dole, Itanagar. In Tripura, there is a heritage river Gomti and a lake Dumbur curved out of the river Gomti. 
the whole area around River Gomti and Dumbur has now become a heritage site and also a tourist destination. Here's a report from a correspondent, Reena. Tripura is one of the most important cultural and heritage hotspots in the northeastern region. Century-old historical sites, archaeological spots, rivers and lakes and temples going back hundreds of years. Wildlife sanctuaries and arts and crafts of the state portray the heritage of the people of the state. Every year, lots of domestic and foreign tourists travel to this state to savor the palette of heritage spots of the state. Among all the heritage sites, the Gomiti River is regarded as one of the most important Sakyat destinations to all people belonging to different religion, language, caste and class. Every year, mainly the Hindu people take a journey to the southernmost corner of the state to take a holy bath at the wee hours of Makar Sankranti at Tritamuk of the Gomati River. Mythology suggests that taking a holy bath at Tritamuk, which is the origin of the river Gomati, has been continuing since more than 500 years back. The river Gomati has also given a hydel project, which has been created about 60 years ago by carving out a channel from the river Gomati and this lake is known as Dumbur Lake. A 41 square kilometre Dumbur Lake has passed through coarse crisscrossing hills and a deep forest. Dumbur Lake is a charming water body located in Gandachira subdivision, which is 120 kilometre away from Agatala. The lake looks like a tobor shaped small drum, Dumbur of Lord Siva, from which the name Dumbur originates. Recently, the state government has taken massive efforts to make this destination more attractive and can be explored by the tourists. The government has launched boating facilities in Dumbur and will set up log huts in Narkel Kunja or the Coconut State very soon. Talking to AIA News, Assistant Director of Tripura Tourism Development Corporation, Mirnal Kantida said. In uh, Dumbur, we have arranged motorboat at uh, Nakil Kunjo and uh, Gandachara and Mondrigar. These uh, lock huts will be constructed very recently. About 18 lock huts will be constructed there in Dumbur. And uh, even for uh, promotion of Tripura tourism, we have arranged jet ski at Nakil Kunjo. The Dumbur Lake, with an unending spell of luxuriant green vegetation, stands majestic for the charming beauty. It has 48 islands in the midst of the lake. Most of these islands are accessible by boat. The other attraction of Dumbur and Anarkal Kunja is finding rare varieties of migratory birds fishing from the lake, which is wood watching. For Nadis Dari, this is Rina Numaitem from Magatala. Today we bring an interview with Avinas Joshi, Principal Secretary, Revenue and Disaster Management, Assam Government, by our Guwahati correspondent Manas Pratim Sharma. Good evening, Mr. Joshi. Welcome to this episode of North East Daddy. Would you please tell us what steps that have been taken by the district administration and by the Assam government to minimize the damages in flood? This year uh, we have taken uh, special steps. What I will do, like flood preparedness for 2021, I will divide it in uh, four parts. One is routine work, which we do every year. Second, how we are going to use technology this time to minimize the damage and reach out to the affected people earliest. Number three, I will discuss about the fund uh, available and fund uh, disbursed to the districts. And number four, I will discuss about the new initiatives which we have taken in the current current year. Right, sir. So far as routine work is concerned, we started our preparedness and we had a video conference with all the deputy commissioners on the flood preparedness which was held on 23rd April. After that, as a routine, all the checklist we have shared with the deputy commissioner, guidelines for relief camp and uh, SOP for uh, COVID appropriate relief camp is already shared with the deputy commissioner. In fact, this time we have 200 flatable rubber boats which we have deployed in different districts. 20 passenger speed boat are also provided to six districts. We have this time two boat ambulances also for uh, Mazuli, which we procured from the CSR fund. To reach out to the difficult area, we have provided 19 satellite phones. 13 are in the district and others are at the state headquarters, so that uh, even if uh, when uh, phone network does not work, we can use satellite phones. NDRF team is already positioned and they are at uh, eight different locations across the state and locations are chosen in a way that uh, they can reach out to any required place within a shortest possible time. 
सेम वे एस टी आर एफ आर अवेलेबल इन ऑल द डिस्ट्रिक्ट स्टेट लेवल फ्लड प्रिपेयरनेस रिव्यू मीटिंग अगेन वॉज हेल्ड विद अंडर द चेयरमैनशिप ऑफ चीफ सेक्रेटरी दैट वॉज ऑन ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट मे एज यू नो अजमा इज द नोडल एजेंसी फॉर दिस डिजास्टर सो अजमा इज कैरिंग आउट वेरी एग्रेसिव अवेयरनेस कैंपेन थ्रू प्रिंट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक एंड सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म In fact, the major uh, new initiatives came when Honorable Chief Minister Assam reviewed flood preparedness with all the districts through video conference on 19th May. And looking at the seriousness, again after four days we had a flood review meeting at the CM level on 23rd May. So I will, uh, in the due course, I will tell you about the new initiatives also. And uh, in fact, the DCs are instructed to make available all the GR graduation certificate for item like tarpaulin, cloth, etc. and uh, in fact we have asked uh, this time dc to sanction all the rehabilitation grant proposal of storm flood cyclone within 30 days from the occurrence of the disaster so this will give us the timely input and timely disbursement of the money one thing which we have done and i think earlier was also there but with the renewed emphasis is revenue circle level task force which is done for the flood damage assessment and timely submission of different proposals so this is so far as the routine work is concerned let me briefly touch about the technology i believe that you know technology can be a game changer and if we use the technology properly we can assess the situation well in advance as well as we can uh, you know reach out to the people at the shortest possible time so for that uh, what we have done like uh, now we have online flood reporting system which is called prims f r i m s so in prims that is flood reporting uh, information management system uh, we get the you know early warning and early warning is uh, generated by nsec and which is disseminated to all the districts as well as the revenue circles at a very very fast speed other than that asdama we have notified even um, flood up to the village level based on the scientific data available with us so this technological inputs also will uh, help us in uh, predicting the flood and uh, reaching out to the people for uh, uh, minimizing the damage damage third yeah. about the fund so this 75 crore we have already given to the districts as advance and sdo other than that uh, the chief minister uh, meeting the cm honorable cm has also announced that rupees uh, 10 lakh will be given to the districts out of cm relief fund which can be used for the purpose for which fund is not otherwise available in the regular uh, budget and all then fund uh, already has been given to deputy commissioner so that they can place the order for rice also at the open market uh, scheme so that we get the rice uh, sufficiently in advance and uh, one more thing let me tell you that sufficient fund is available almost 7 800 crore is available for uh, different work under sdrf for uh, flood relief now i'll come to the most important part what i have discussed till now is uh, every year we are doing i think sir this is for the first time moreover like uh, what we have seen in uh, a uh, year to year that there is delay in the sanction of fund so now deputy commissioners are empowered sanction and disburse amount of gr search and rescue operation and for the assistance under different uh, damages under different department like agriculture animal husbandry handicraft etc moreover some of the things for which they had to come to state government for uh, ceiling those are also now exempted from the ceiling so i understand that uh, for this we can have very expeditious type of damage assessment and disbursement of relief and then two things we have done like uh, we have already instructed deputy commissioners that all the adc circle officer should uh, stay in the headquarter and from asdama as well as from the government we have deputed each officer for two or three districts so that they can have close coordination with the district authorities and guide them for the expeditious handling of the relief so i think uh, this all uh, all uh, i think what we have done uh, till now mm-hmm. and till now so we don't have any of the major floods some things is building up in uh, north lakhimpur and all we are keeping a very close watch and uh, with the technology available i think we can reach out and we can uh, even assess in advance and uh, we can uh, take the necessary preventive measures to minimize the damage mm-hmm. and finally sir it is uh, sometimes it came to notice uh, through media that there is a allegation uh, during the distribution of rice and uh, salt every i mean this necessary necessary essential food items during the uh, flood time so what step this year you are taking you know to prevent such allegation yeah 
I get your point. See what we have done. Now we have this uh, online flood reporting system that is Prince Flood Reporting Information Management System. In fact, I have personally seen it. There you get uh, real time basis data. And Honorable Chief Minister has also instructed very clearly that if some area is not affected, then nothing should be given uh, and nothing should unnecessarily misappropriated for those uh, villages or those people where flood is not there. Whereas, wherever flood is there and people have suffered, we have been uh, asked to provide relief immediately to all the affected families. In fact, we have gone a step further. Earlier in the earlier years, we hardly used to give, you know, grant for utensils and uh, clothes. But now, Honorable Chief Minister has said that uh, this, this is a provision and when people, they are under flood, they are under water, they lose their utensils, they lose their clothes. So, instructions are given to Deputy Commissioner that wherever there are flood affected families, per family, rupees 3,800 has to be given as the grant for utensils and clothes. And what we have done that uh, we will keep a very close watch of all the relief distribution uh, operations and those, uh, you know, wrong people or ineligible people, they don't get to this relief and the eligible people are not left out, we'll ensure that with the help of technology, with the help of our deployment officers in the district, and with the help of all the FP commissioners, ADCs, and circle officers, and circle level teams. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. You're giving us time and giving a, uh, has given a very, you know, valuable feedback on the uh, flood situation and the steps that are being taken to prevent the damages. Thank you again, sir. N.J. Gumpa, which is one of the key tourist draws in Sikkim's capital Gangtok, stands out among the state's numerous monasteries for its religious significance and heritage. Belonging to the Nyingma order of the Vajrayana Buddhism, N.J. is among the oldest monasteries of Sikkim, believed to have existed for around 200 years. Let's learn more about this from a correspondent. First, on a hilltop near Gantok, Inche Monastery originated as a meditation and hermitage site. The old shrine was developed into a full-fledged monastery in 1840 AD with the establishment of 15 monks and the religious name Sangye Rabdeling, meaning a sacred stable place. The current structure of Inche was rebuilt in 1908 as an artistic adaptation of the Chinese temple of Gyanak Riva Tenga during the reign of the 10th Chogel Sikyong Tulko. A scholar at the monastery, Kenpo Tashi Paljor, speaks about its significance. Inche Monastery, which is originated during 1840, which Inche Monastery belongs to Mandolin sect um, and rituals. Monastery has its own monastic school where monks practice ritual and philosophy about Buddhism. So we worship Mahakala as the main protector of our monastery uh, and also from different places and from different community devotees often come to worship it is here to fulfill their different wishes. Our monastery yearly offer four main rituals uh, which are curling shitro so which means magical display of peaceful and worthful ones. Uh, it's a terma of karma lingpa. So karling means a name of a person and terma means it's a hidden treasure or hidden scripture, something like that. So second one is purva namcha pudi, which means cycles of tantric teachings. And also third one is dorsen. So dorsen means state of commitment to what is indestructible, also known as vajrasatala. Fourth and last one is uh, Guru Dabbo, which means that form of Guru Pema with Bhadra and Scorpion. The deities worshipped at Inche Monastery include the Buddha, Lokiteshwara and Guru Padma Sambhava. Special prayers are organized annually on the 18th and 19th days of the 12th lunar month of the Tibetan calendar. The monastery also hosts the vibrant Cham or religious marks dance every January. With Saikya Sarkar, this is Tashyong Mubutia for Northeast Dairy, Sikkim. And now, here are some interesting facts about the Northeast. The little meaning of Mizoram is land of the hill people. Fireworks and crackers are banned in Mizoram since 2009. With that, we have come to the end of this edition of Northeast Diary. Do join us next week to hear more stories from this enchanting part of India. Bye-bye.